Hello YouTube, it's CM American History here, back again with another video, and today we'll be talking about, like I said last video, the Knapp Roller Boat, which, um, I will explain shortly. So, I know I said last video I would talk about, um, you know, new ocean liner projects, or if I didn't, I'm gonna, I will say it now. Uh, the next few videos on the channel will be about, um, ocean liner projects that were never completed, and of course, well, not ocean liners, specifically, but just, I should say, seagoing projects, I guess you could say. But, um, today's project, as the second part of the series, the first one being the, uh, Getty's Whale Ship, which you can find on my channel, um, will be the Nap Roller Boat, which you can actually see in the, uh, I realize it's grainy, but the photo was taken in 1890s, so it's not gonna be wonderful. So, Let's continue uh, with the topic. Uh, there were several, uh, remember correctly, designs for the whale, for, not for the whale ship, the roller boat. I, wow, my brain is messed up today. Anyway, um, let's continue. Now, like I did with the last video, I'm going to use um, great passenger ships that never were uh, by David Williams and Richard uh, P. DeCourt. De Kerbrek, I think I said that right. Um, it's a really good book. I'm gonna use it as a source for all the for all the next videos in the series. But anyway, let's uh, begin. The rollerboat was invented in the 1890s by Frederick Augustus Knapp, who was a Canadian lawyer for Prescott, Ontario. His idea was that a revolving outer cylinder around a stationary inner cylinder would create less water resistance and minimize seasickness. He would later find out this was very hard to do. And what, what that means, say you have a inside circle, pretty much. And inside in that circle is where all your compartments are. And then a larger rotating circle on the outside that would propel the boat. That was what the design of the roller boat was supposed to do. However, as Mr. Knapp soon found out, that is not what would happen. As the least like ship, as the least ship-like concept among those described in the book, some of the content of the Canadian patent for the rollerboat design registered on April 13, 1897, under number 55620, um, gives people an idea of what Knapp was trying to achieve with his craft. The overall description from the first paragraph of the patent of the patent document reads. The object of this invention is to drive a vessel capable of attaining a high rate of speed of absolute safety and great economy, and it consists essentially of a rotatable double outer hull within which are suspended stationary hulls or compartments containing the freight or passengers and the motive power and suitable steering apparatus. Apart from this claim as in Silver and Morse patent, there is no explanation if in the long and wordy document concerning the mechanical principles by which the strange contraption would make any headway, meaning how it would move let alone achieve the incredible speed of around 75 knots required to cross the Atlantic in the 35 hours of this claim for it. To my current knowledge, there has not been one ocean liner or cruise ship that has achieved the speed of 75 knots ever. could be wrong there, but I believe that is an inconceivable prospect, especially for the 1890s when this was, um, when this was tried to be attained. Um, to do, do. The details of the means of propulsion and steering were sketchy at best and require, uh, that would have required much stretching of the imagination. After exploiting the single cylinder and piston connected to a crankshaft as shown in the drawing appended to the patent were intended only to be indicative, um, Mr. Knapp continued, in practice, suitable triple expansion engines would preferably be employed and the power might be differently applied to halt. That is what Mr. Knapp said. Um, simple matters such as how boiler fumes would be exhausted and how coal fume for the steam boilers would be bunkered are not mentioned. As for the method of steering, a windlass contained within the pilot house attained to wind up chains as so as to cause the drive pa paddles, excuse me, <clears throat> so as to cause the drive paddles at either end to enter the water to a greater or lesser extent as might be desired. So, what I just read to you were excerpts from the patent document that, uh, Silver and more put together for Mr. Knapp for his boat. And a, this probably reached one of the later stages in its construction. 
Um, but a 60 foot by 15 foot diameter model of the roller boat, which you can see in this photograph here. Um, a scaled down version of the actual one, which was supposed to be, it was never built, but was supposed to be 750 feet long by 100 feet in, di 150 feet in diameter, and was supposed to have a 35 hour transatlantic roller ship. And it was built at, would have been built at the, it would have been built, but the actual test model was also built here at the Poulsen Ironworks in Toronto and was tested in Toronto Harbor on October 27, 1897. So this is it in 1897. I don't know if this is post-test or pre-test because I, all pictures I've seen this, this is illegible down here, so I'm really not sure. Um, in practice, it was a complete failure. No surprise. It was completely ra randomly new topic at that point in time, so no surprise it failed. Because there was no previous precedent to this, so how did they know it was going to work? They didn't. Um, as the repulsive power of the craft was increased, it was driven deeper into the water rather than forwards, and it became quite unmanageable. The best speed achieved before it virtually submerged itself was 8 knots. The wreck of the model craft was buried during landfilling on the Toronto waterfront in the 1930s. As the Toronto Star Snake League commented some years later, the only rolling achieved by Knapp's boat was to, according to this book, roll flat the bank accounts of a few suckers. A sum of $30,000 had been sunk when the roller boat went down, because that's what was made in the test craft of the roller boat. Um, however, so they poured $30,000 into it, and the scrap value was $450, or 90 pounds for... Um, my overseas friends. And that's the story of the Nap Roller Boat. It was a pretty short concept. Um, didn't last very long. And for the thumbnail, I'll try and see if I can find a, a better picture. To, I, of course, cannot find the book picture that that is in the book here. But um, it's still a very cool concept. And I wanted to tell you guys about that. And I believe my my next video is either going to be on the Spirit of the Age, or, uh, let's see, maybe the, uh, maybe the Nederland. That's, uh, that's another topic, but I might go into that in the next video, so who knows. But I hope you guys enjoy, and the next video will definitely be on, be on a, um, Ocean Liner project, or a sea-related project, I should say, a seaborne vessel-related project, and uh, that should be coming out soon, maybe tomorrow, maybe today, who knows, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and have a good day, bye!